everyone it's Natasha from Treasure Books. You have asked and I am delivering. So in this video I'm going to show you how I stain my paper using onion skins. So we will do yellow onion skin, red onion skin and we will experiment with red and yellow together. So three little experiments and lots and lots of interesting observations which I will of course share with you. All right I hope you guys feel inspired. Let's begin. Let's start with the yellow onion. So I should clarify, these are yellow onion skins. So it's only skins and I've been collecting them for a little while. So I'm just going to pop some in, uh, I don't know how many, maybe let's say five, six, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna put it in there. I might as well just put it all in there, why not? So I'm not measuring anything, that's the fun part. So every batch might be different. And here I am adding about a liter and a half of boiled water. You can see already that color in there. See? And I guess the more you put in, the uh, more saturated the color will be. So I have just over a liter and a half in there, and I'm going to add more, actually. So I think I have about two liters of water in there and a bunch of yellow onion skins, maybe. Let's say there's about six onions in there or the skins from six onions and i'm only using obviously the very dry outer layer and therefore your paper is not going to smell like onion make sure you don't use any of the the white bit okay so now i'm going to put this on the stove okay here we go so i've, I've put it on there and now i'm going to wait for the water to come to the boil and then i'm going to reduce the heat and simmer this for maybe let's say an hour but I have to say this hasn't even come to the boil yet and you can see already there's quite a bit of color there so it probably depends on how much you know how many onion skins you put in there oh and look at this I'm collecting the avocado skins and, and pits and I'm going to dye some paper using that as well but not today I'll do that next time so now I'm going to do this exact same thing with my red onion skins so I would say approximately you need about three onions per one liter of water and the thing is when I say onions I mean onions differ in size so maybe like large onions like this would be the ones that I mean when I say three onions per one liter of water if you have the little onions then you would need a lot more okay add my boiling water all right here we go so that's about two liters of water in there you can see it's already uh, colored somewhat the water and now i'm going to put this in my stove top and there we go so i'm going to wait for this one to come to the boil and then i'm going to reduce heat and let it simmer for about an hour and you can see that this one is already boiling away so now i'm going to reduce heat and let it simmer maybe a gentle boil I don't know maybe a simmer let's do a simmer this is the thing I never really you know I don't follow a particular sort of recipe I just kind of go with whatever I feel like and I mean look at this color it's surprising me look at that like it looks red and it, this is the yellow onion skins it's quite interesting and this one's slowly approaching the boil point let's see how dark that color is looking doesn't look like there's a whole lot of difference, does it, between the two? That's quite interesting, interesting observation. We shall see what happens. All right, I'll be back in an hour. Okay, it has been one hour, that's simmering away. And that's simmering away. And I just wanted to mention that I didn't actually cover the pots because I wanted that water to evaporate to leave a more concentrated solution. All right, so now I'm going to take this off and strain it into my pan okay and I'm starting with the yellow onion solution so this is the yellow onion it's gone kind of red all right now I'm straining my red onion solution there we go okay now I'm just going to wait a few minutes for this to cool down a little bit so I can put my hands in there to put my paper in there while I'm waiting for this to cool down I'm going to do my red and yellow onion solution okay so you can see here I have a mixture of both red and yellow and I'm just going to chuck it all in there and I'm doing the exact same thing as before 
All right, here we go. So this is going now onto the stove to boil and simmer for about an hour. Same as the previous two. All right, let's see what's happening here. So this is my yellow onion solution. And this one here is my red. So you can see that the red is a lot more concentrated or darker solution. And now I'm going to start placing papers in there. All right, so in my previous tea dyeing video, a lot of people were asking what copy paper I use. I just use the ATGSN copy paper. Yeah, I don't really look at brands. I just buy the cheapest one. I'm not sure where this one is from. Maybe, maybe this one's from Officeworks. But in general, I just buy, you know, the cheapest one that I can find. And it's just ATGSM. It's not very heavy weight paper. And then I did show this in the previous video, but I'm just going to pop the paper in there one by one like this. The solution is still very hot. I'm, I do have a glove on, but I can feel that it's quite hot in there. I might put some doilies in there as well. And I'll just keep adding until I get right to the top of the solution. I've also cut up some watercolor little bits of paper and I'm going to put that in there. See what happens, see how they come out. These are some business cards, a business card paper that I've just had in my stash. I'm going to put that in there as well. I might put in some coloring pages. We can dye fabric with this, all sorts of things. I'll put in an envelope in there. Maybe I'll do two two envelopes, some more paper. All right, I think that's enough for this one. And now I'm going to repeat this whole process with my red onion skin solution. I generally like to use a larger pan, but I don't really have much option because I'm already using that large pan for the yellow skin. So you can see that this solution is quite a bit darker. So in my previous video, I had a lot of people ask me, how come my paper doesn't rip? And I think, so you know that the doilies are very flimsy, especially when they're wet. And I think when you're taking the paper out, the secret is just to be really, really gentle with it. Try and keep it as straight as possible when you're taking it out. So I don't know. I mean, I really don't think it's, it matters what paper you use. And that's also another reason why I like to have a large pan when I'm doing this because then I have more space here on the side to grab the paper properly. When I'm putting the envelopes in you might have noticed I put it in opened and when I take it out I dry them opened as well so that they don't seal shut. I'm going to put in some of these business cards as well and then I can separate them once they are uh, dyed. In my previous tea dyeing video I have mentioned how I use uh, baking soda to reduce the acidity of the solution. I don't actually do that with this because onion skin is not as acidic as coffee or tea is. So no baking soda or bicarb soda. I think they're the same thing. Okay, I think that's enough for this one. So I don't know if you can see the difference. This is my yellow onion skin and this is my red onion skin. So you can see when I press down, it's quite dark compared to this one. I don't know. We'll see what the result is going to be. You can't get it wrong. That's a thing. You can't go wrong. All right, I'm going to leave my paper in there for hours. I don't know how many hours. Two, three, four, five. I don't really know. Sometimes I leave it in for just two hours. Sometimes I leave it in overnight. But I will let you know, of course, once it's done. Also, if you want to know how I take the papers out and how I dry them and lay them out, you know, and all that sort of stuff, I explained all of those things in my tea dyeing video. So I will link that down below, of course, you can have a look. I'm not going to, you know, uh, repeat what I showed in that video. So if you are interested, the information is all there. All right. So here is my red and yellow onion solution. And dare I say that it looks the darkest of the three. I'm not sure. We'll see once the papers are done. I'm going to go ahead and put my papers in now. It's looking quite dark. I know that I say I leave my paper in there for quite a while, but in all honesty, I want to show you this. I'm going to put it in. 
it's already quite saturated with color so it probably doesn't even need to be in there for hours and hours all right so here are my solutions this one here is yellow this one here is red and this one here is red and yellow together so there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of difference this one actually the red one looks the darkest when I'm looking at it like this but overall it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of difference so it'll be interesting to see the final result okay so I'm starting to take out my pages to dry and I go through this whole process in my tea dyeing video but I just wanted to show you this here up the top is yellow skin and I separated it by that cord there and then this down here is red skin so I can't really see much difference but I'm observing something very interesting these pieces here the envelopes are looking so dark see that there and see on that coloring book page paper the border is so dark so red you'd think that that would be the result with using the red onion skin but that's actually yellow but I can also see a lot more yellow in those papers than in these ones here so these papers are looking quite dark and one other thing I wanted to mention you probably can't see here because of the lighting but my whole hand is yellow because I didn't wear a glove when I was taking these papers out so it does actually stain your skin you can see my hands here this one's stained so I just also wanted to say that it's only been about two hours even less than two hours that those papers were in the solution I started taking them out because they were already getting quite dark so maybe even an hour would be enough well I have had some very interesting observations during this experiment my hypothesis was disproven and my hypothesis was that yellow skin will produce yellow paper red skin will produce red paper and red and yellow skin will produce something in between but as you can see that is not the case they have most definitely produced somewhat different results but I was expecting a lot more yellow in the yellow what I was really surprised by is the, the amount of variation within the same solution I'll show you what I mean okay so you can see that this is my yellow batch my first very first batch that I did with yellow skins and let me just show you something I can take this off I don't need it so this is the exact same solution so what I do is I put papers in you saw me do that and then once they are saturated with color enough I take them out to dry and then when I have more space in my solution I add more papers so this is what I wanted to show you as I'm sort of leafing through over here you will see how the color changes as we go through now look look at this look at this I mean this is the exact same solution the exact same solution and the exact same paper so it's not different type of paper it's that same copy paper that I showed you has given me these two different colors because I think as you keep adding more papers to the solution take them taking them out keep adding more I think the solution becomes weaker so the very first batch always comes out the darkest and then as you progress it goes weaker and weaker and weaker but I have had some variations look at this within the same page I have I don't even know if you can see in the video I hope so I have yellow here I have red around the sides it, even on here you can see this variation on one page in the it was in one it was obviously in the same solution so it's really quite interesting and I have to be honest I love the effects and also another thing I wanted to say another thing that I have noticed as well is of course the type of paper that you're using will give you a different color so for example these envelopes turned out a different completely different color uh, than some of the papers did and you know some of this paper it's com I don't know what's going on here there's red here and there's yellow in here obviously that was in the solution sitting in the solution like this so it's really really interesting I was expecting a lot more yellow you can see some yellow here and when I compared this to this one which I'll show you next you can see that there's a lot more yellow in these doilies for example than in these doilies I mean I actually prefer this to yellow the reason why I'm so surprised is because I have done a batch of dyeing before using onion skins this is from my previous batch and all of my papers turned out really yellow whereas this time around they all turned out with red in in them like where is this red coming from so I think there's a lot of variables to consider how old are your onion skins the onion skins that I had in that jar were there I say up to a year old okay 
how hot the water may be, um, how much water per an onion skin, you know, how long do you boil, how saturated is the solution, what paper are you using, how much paper do you put into the solution at one time, how long does it stay in there for, how does it dry. I think all of those variables sort of come into play and produce a completely different result every time you do your tea dyeing. Uh, I mean, onion skin or paper dyeing, I should say. So let's just have a quick look at the red onion skin. All right, so real quick, here is the red uh, solution. And this one here has a lot more gray in it. So you will see um, there's not much red, but, but you can see there's a lot more gray in it. And I really, really like it. And then you can also see the difference between the envelopes, you know. And just for comparison, this is from the yellow solution. I love it. Either way, I mean, I really don't care. I just really love the results. And then these little bits, you know, how cool. And then here's all this stuff. And I dry my papers laying flat. You can see this. There, there is somewhat of a wave in the paper because I didn't lay it under anything heavy. But I usually do. I explained all of that in my previous video. So, you know, I don't want to repeat myself. So these ones here, they have quite a bit of yellow in them. Let's compare to this same batch. Also, these ones were the very last uh, part that I did. So after these ones were taken out, I threw out whatever tiny little bit of solution was left. Well, actually, if I'm being honest, I didn't throw out any solution. I just combined th the three that were left and I'm still tea dyeing. I mean, uh, paper staining. I'm, yeah, I'm still in the process. And now this is the red and yellow solution. So this one has produced, I think, the darkest results. And I think you can probably already see. And look at this. If I tried to achieve this result, I don't think I would know how to. So uh, there's quite a bit of red and there's quite a bit of yellow. And I found the different types of paper will color differently. So this is from a kid's scrapbook book, you know, the kid's large books that they draw in. And I just cut them down. So I, you know, I have pages ready for my journal. They turned out really yellow. All the other pages didn't turn out so yellow. Look at this. So cool. And I show you how I achieved that with the plastic doily in my previous video. Look at this. I don't even know what this is. I, I am perplexed by this because I really have no idea how that happened, but I love it, whatever it is. Look at this marbling effect. Oh, you probably can't even see. What a shame. Look at this. So what happened here is some water has pulled, pulled right in there. And then uh, this was drying very close to my heater. So that water evaporated and left that beautiful marbling effect. And same here. I, you probably can't even see, but... It really, really looks cool. And then the cardstock papers that I had, these are all cardstock and they seem to have colored quite beautifully and they have grabbed a lot more color than the other pages. So in conclusion, my friends, I would say don't even worry about it. Just chuck in some onion skins, boil it for a bit, put some paper in and whatever you do, you can't go wrong. It will be fine. And I think in general, in crafting and, and scrapbooking and that sort of stuff, put that butterfly down. Don't overthink it. Don't think if you should do the flower instead. Who cares? Do whatever. You do you and just go with the flow. Don't overthink. So in any case, I hope that you found the video somewhat inspiring and hopefully somewhat educating as well. I am quite happy with the result. I really love these little bundles that I've got here. I kind of feel bad using them up now because they look so pretty like this. In any case, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!